And we are back, everybody. Here on Agenda 31. Coming at you on No Agenda Stream and NoAgendaStream.com. This is Todd McGreevy and Corey Ibe. We're in the second hour of our two-hour pre-recorded show on March 8th, 2014. We appreciate you listening and downloading this uh, audio file. You talked about uh, in the previous hour you know, how you're very, because uh, you're so confident in how you identify yourself and, and where you are domiciled, that you are one of the people of California 1849, which by the way, um, you know, you've pointed to the, the Supreme Court case, Texas v. White, as evidence that these jurisdictions do exist contemporaneously, that being uh, Constitution of 1849 and the, the codified uh, administrative constitution, or the constitution that outsourced uh, administrative duties, if you will, of 1879, that they do coexist. They do, and that and is- and there is a real difference between the two. Like I mentioned earlier, the the California, as defined by its Constitution of 1849, is one of the states that's guaranteed a Republican form of government in the Constitution. California state, as defined by its Constitution of 1879, is not one of the states guaranteed by the Constitution to a Republican form of government. It's a critical distinction. And, Huge, and that guarantee of a Republican form of government. We've talked about that on this on this show before, uh, with the help of uh, Tim from Illinois. And if you go to thirdrailblog.com, you'll see those Supreme Court cases on the left side. Um, we, we we should dive into those again. I I'm excited to play this clip coming up here. It's about 15 minutes long, and um, let's. It, this is the Officer August clip. Is what we're what, I'm, what I'd like to do oh, a little bit, yeah. You know, because you you've said that you're you know very um, you know confident and, and ready, willing, and able to defend your position, um, you know peacefully uh, is the key term here. Uh, defend your position peacefully of how, yes. who you are, how you identify yourself, and and how you conduct yourself. And I've been privy to a lot that we haven't even aired on the show over the last two years we've worked together, Corey, and and uh, I'm, I'm I'm really impressed with how you do uh, handle yourself. This this we're gonna only play 15 minutes of this. I, you know, I'm a geek about these this subject matter, so you know it's riveting to me. And I guess if you're continuing to listen to this in the second hour, it might be riveting to you as well. But this is, I think, only 15, 15 minutes of, of a forty five minute stop. Wasn't well, it? the entire stop was about an hour and a half. Oh my! Yeah. So there, there was a, all the all the silent period w- has been edited out. There's mm-hmm. quite a bit of time where Officer August, who is the uh, sergeant in charge of traffic operations in Irvine. Uh, reviewing documents and and being very methodical about how he went about conducting himself at this stop. Uh, the audio starts after the stop has been initiated and after I've already given him a copy of my common law ID and some other documents that are designed to explain my position to give him an idea of, of where we're at. And it picks up when he comes right back to the car. And, uh, and more, a little and we'll more context, there. though, is that this is shortly after you obtained the California exempt license plate for the automobile that the state owns. That's correct. Yeah, and that's a critical distinction. Uh, and for people new to this subject matter, you know, Corey's uh, trajectory, if you will, that got him here included um, rescinding his uh, contractual obligations with the DMV, you know, canceling his – he goes into it, and so I want to give that away. But what I'm getting at is the reason he was even uh, pulled over is because this guy saw a plate that he couldn't believe. It was exempt. It, was one, it looked like government plates on a late model Mercedes. That's right. In, in fact, the only time, they are government plates. The, mm-hmm. the only thing you see these <laughs> plates on are government vehicles, buses, cop cars. Um, right. uh, anything to do with a government operation mm-hmm. has these license plates on it. I obtained them for my car based on following law, uh, not using, you know, very open about how I obtained the plates. But it is something that is so foreign to the brain conditioning that everyone's had that it really had the officers uh, uh, freaking out. So, yeah, we'll go ahead and play this. Corey, are we still on terms where I can call you, Corey? Yeah. Okay. Um, some of this paperwork I have not seen before, so I'm trying to understand it as best I can. Okay. Do um, you realize at one point you did? Acknowledge you had a driver's license in California because you did have one? At one point, there was a license issued. I yeah. canceled it, and I can provide you a letter. I don't have it with me, but okay. I can provide you a letter from the DMV that it was being canceled. Okay. The reason why it was canceled uh-huh. is both my signature okay. and the picture associated with that have been removed. It was um, – that's part of a – what 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 it is is the manifestation of my displeasure with Washington, D.C. Okay. 
um, there's an element of political pledging with the application for a driver's license, and that's what his. So basically, assumed. accepting the, the the state's governance and over you and all that type of stuff, or no, that that's not it. The the state exists legitimately, and that that's not at all the the question here. The question is authority, so in jurisdiction. Um, I'm sorry, not authority, but jurisdiction. For example, I'll give you an example that sure. is a pretty big deal up in L.A. Uh, I was involved in a case up in L.A., and there was an LAPD officer who I believed exceeded his jurisdiction. I was able to show that he did, and he acted as a peace officer or an officer of the state. And um, you'll find now that's changed the behavior of the L.A. County Recorder's Office. Okay. And Chief Beck acknowledged to me from his office, and thank you. <clears throat> pardon me, thank me for bringing it to his attention, that only the oaths of office are held at the county recorder's office only for officers of the state. Okay. Now, I think it's people versus battle, I, I can't remember exactly, but uh, the courts said that there are clearly two governments in each state. Okay. We have a state government and a federal government. Okay. The state government that we see today is um, a franchise of the federal government, as I mentioned before, by voluntary consent of the people, but that doesn't mean the original state government doesn't exist. And so what we have right now is my jurisdiction being in California 1849, okay. doesn't give me a free ride. I'm okay. still responsible to follow all the rules and everything, which is why there's plates on the car, um, why I gave you identification, sure. everything else. Um, but it means a different set of rules apply than what maybe not what maybe, but what virtually every law enforcement officer that I've come in contact with realized, including LAPD. But now, with this, with this example with LAPD, let's say I was standing on the sidewalk in front of Parker Center and they felt that I was a violation of LA City Code. Okay. They would have to um, call the sheriff and have the sheriff come in because the sheriff has jurisdiction in the sheriff's department in California State 1879 but the sheriff's office, and their oaths are according to this, also has jurisdiction in California 1849, and that's why their oaths are held at the county recorder's office. So it wouldn't be that they couldn't do anything, okay. but to properly process any charge that they would have, they would have to hold me like any other citizen, and then have a sheriff come down and file a complaint. Okay. So if you get, so is it different if you get stopped by a deputy sheriff for a motor vehicle violation? Uh, no, because the motor vehicle violation um, would. Uh, are you familiar with California Vehicle Code 21052? Which one is that? It covers who the code applies to. Okay. And I'll look it up. Okay. Is, didn't you say that we had, you had not had contact with us before? I, 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 uh, the word contact has a very specific meaning, so I, I'm not recalling a contact with Irvine PD. Okay. Um, I've talked to Irvine PD. I mean, have you ever been stopped by Irvine PD? Not and that issued I a citation. Not that I recall. A parking ticket. No, I tra I mean, I'm talking traffic stops where you receive a citation and file a, a suit against one of our officers or threaten to file a suit. No. Okay. No, look, I'm very careful about okay. making sure it's not personal. Okay. Right. He's relying on his training that you might be a sovereign citizen, Corey. Well, and, and I think what uh, might have gotten around or brought up that comment was uh, a parking ticket that I had received from Irvine and uh, responded with, and this is on the YouTube channel, uh, youtube.com slash Corey Ibe. You can see how I handled the parking ticket. Uh, m somehow maybe one of the, the dispatchers or something said, you know, hey, this guy tried to sue us or whatever, and that, that wasn't the case at all. It was simply with the parking ticket that okay, I'll conditionally accept this ticket, but if, uh, if you go ahead and let me pay it at the DMV, then you guys are going to owe me a whole bunch of money. And they ended up not transferring that ticket to the Department of Motor Vehicles. So I, I, that's the only contact or, or interaction I'd had with Irvine Police Department prior to this, this, uh, this stop with Officer August. Relax. Sorry, she's hungry. What's that? She's hungry, sorry. Oh, okay. You live in Laguna? Is that where you stay? Uh, well, that is that is a mailing address that I use, and I yeah. keep where I sleep at night very private. It's a, it's a P.O. box. Yeah. Okay. Well, let me finish up my research, and we'll get you on your way. Okay. Is that fair? I appreciate your service, and however I can help. All right. Thanks, sir. Mm -hmm. Corey? Yeah. So you were saying this is the first time that a, vehicle's ever, a private vehicle's ever been given an exempt license status? That I'm aware of. Okay, because I... 
It looks like you just got this done recently because when I when I run the VIN it's number, a, yeah, it comes back to another plate that is, has expired registration, but it shows this is in process. You just had this issued like a week ago, a week and a half. I think it was May sixteenth or so. Okay, that's after nearly three years of dealing with the DMV. Really? Yeah, but the same car. Not the same car, just the same, same issue. Same issue? Right. Okay. And what do they? why do they finally issue you the exempt license plate? Just because just... the director, George Valverde, faced, uh -huh. faced losing his job if he didn't do oh. it. All right. I'm not trying to give you a hard time. I'm just trying to figure out and make sense of Look, this. Look, I can appreciate that this can be a difficult stop for you. And so well, my, my goal as one of the people of California is to affect a government in a positive way. Okay. So I hope that... This is a positive contact. No, you've been all very, very polite because, like I said, we, you know, officers and myself have stopped people who put, claim to be sovereign citizens. Right. And they put very different stuff on, and they're very, very argumentative and very confrontational. So I appreciate your candor and the way you've been treating this. Thank and you. Allow me the time to kind of research this a little bit, so I make an appropriate decision on how I'm going to proceed, which Fair is, is in our both both of our best interests. If that's okay with you, if you don't mind, give me a couple minutes to do that. Uh, absolutely. Is that yeah, fair? Yeah. All right. Is your dog going to survive? I think she'll make it. W who's the guy that almost lost his job? The director of what? Well, the uh, George Valverde is the director of the DMV, and I had positioned it such that um, if they did not issue the plates, my next step was to go after his job for illegally levying upon property, which is enumerated in the law that is a crime, and if you're convicted of that crime, you would lose your job. So uh, getting those plates issued, if they decided that they were going to yeah, say no. We're not going to issue the plates, and we want money from you. I was prepared to go after the the uh, job of the director of the DMV. And, and for clarification, the the plates that were issued were ex exempt California plates. And I've I've seen the actual registration. I, I think you've posted it out there in the ether, if yeah. you will. Oh yeah. If you search engine, uh, you know Corey Ibe exempt, you know CA plates. You know you'll probably find it. Um, it says there, you know, amount for the registration zero, and then until like what two thousand and ninety nine or something like that. That's right. Yeah. yeah, and and something that is fascinating amongst people who want to be able to travel is there is a huge amount of case law that says the government cannot regulate the use of an automobile, uh, it classifies an automobile as personal goods, uh, so many things that are geared towards an automobile, yet our conditioning is such that. A lot of people don't realize that they, your car with the registration tags on it is not an automobile. It's a passenger vehicle. So you have to – no different. You're, in fact, in a passenger vehicle, you are allowed to be paid money to transport passengers around. And that's a new industry that has popped up here in Orange County and I think all over the country where it's an alternative to taxis mm -hmm. that uh, somebody can contact you from – uh, an internet connection or something like that, and mm -hmm. you can go and pick them up in your your personal passenger car. Yeah. They pay you money, and you take them wherever they want. You have the license for it. Uh, the registration covers that type of activity, but an automobile would not qualify for that. An automobile is personal goods, and the registration clearly says automobile permanent exempt. And so they the the DMV issued this exempt plate because they considered it to be a personal or because you, through the use of your very carefully controlled signature as the representative of the birth certificate, showed them that the birth certificate is owned by the government, as is the automobile, the car, the vehicle, and subsequently it is a government vehicle. I thought that was what your approach was. It, it was. Well, the, the birth certificate, that person is government property, mm -hmm. and that's who the automobile is registered to. Mm -hmm. In paperwork that I have, uh, which was filed at the Secretary of State, I have a financial interest in that person, but it's not me. I'm not that person. So the registration went to a government entity, which is very uh, compliant with law. It's very clear that uh, there shall be no registration upon state or federal property. And the birth certificate is state property, which is federal. Um, and it was really no problem at the DMV to get it issued. Now, before I had gone in there to get those plates, it, I think it's important to note that the driver's license had been uh, rescinded. And uh, I, I, had, I no longer occupied the political office of the birth certificate, leaving it as just property of the government. Mm -hmm. And it was really... Uh, a relatively pain-free operation going in. It took all of maybe 10 to 12 minutes in order to, uh, to get the plates issued. They challenged me on it, and I responded that 
uh, the registration was going to an individual because that's what the birth certificate is. It's an individual and it's property of the state of California. And so when they, when they asked me, what is this? I said, it's an individual property of the state of California. And my signature at the bottom is clear that I'm not that person. I am the authorized representative of that office. And, uh, and it was no problem getting the plates issued. Yeah, that was a big deal. And, uh, that was the uh, uh, culmination of the odyssey of, you know, as you said to Officer August, you know, years of, of effort. And, um, yeah. And, and so this, if, if I, I mean, there's seven minutes left. I do want to play this because I think it's, it's worthy of, of hearing. And, uh, uh, but this, this stop, he, he pulled you over because clearly he just did, had never seen this before, right? That's right. Yeah, so and, there was no supposed infraction like, you know, your left turn signal didn't work or your, you know, you, you were weaving or anything like that. Right. It, it simply was that when they saw that, it, you know, it's not a typical government vehicle. It was an old Mercedes 300E, mm-hmm. um, you know, pretty obvious that it's not owned by what they consider an agency of the government, like a mm-hmm. uh, rapid transit district. It's not a police car. Right. It's not uh, anything like that. It's just an automobile, which is classified as personal goods. Um, and... Uh, and so he pulled me over for that. So the stop itself, uh, I never brought this up, especially given the behavior of Officer August. Um, uh, he he was an, his conduct was exemplary during the entire stop, and uh, so I never brought up the issue that it was illegal for him to pull me over because he thought that you know the plates were wrong. Right. Um, it, it's all a learning process. Being the first one in California that I'm aware of to be able to obtain this this type of plate. Mm-hmm. is certainly going to garner attention. Two days before this stop, uh, I was actually traveling through Huntington Beach and had quite a, uh, uh, a circus, so to speak, of at least a dozen cop cars that had kind of surrounded me as I was leaving the town. They didn't pull me over or stop me, and I did have a conversation with the watch commander at the time. And you know their attitude was clear that their thought was, we have a sovereign citizen here. Mm-hmm. And... Um, you know, the, the different police agencies, I'm sure, communicate with each other. Mm-hmm. So that may have been something that, uh, you know, was communicated to Irvine or, or even put a lookout for the plate. And with all the cameras they've got everywhere, it wasn't hard for them to find me. Mm-hmm. And, and that's where this stop came about. Uh, so, um, Let me just finish this up and I'll have you out of here. Okay. I, I'm not inclined, based on what I'm seeing thus far, to issue a citation. Um, but I, I would like to do as much research as I can at least share it with some of the people that work for me. If that Absolutely. And I, I tell you what, I, I'm happy to give you my contact information. Okay. If command structure at Irvine would like me to come in. I just got back a few days ago, met with uh, Investigator Taft okay. from the Orange County uh, Sheriff's, Sheriff's Office. Sheriff's Department, okay. And went in. We had an hour and a half to kind of go over everything because this is all new to them. Yeah. And um, and I actually have an engagement going on with one of their officers that uh, as a result started, of a, an issue. As a result a of an issue, or? a contact okay. where he decided that he was going to just go ahead and push through with a citation, and I complied all the way through. Sure. Once I signed it, then it was like, okay, now we're going to go to court and talk about it. And okay. so while we were there, he gave me back some of the property that was confiscated, and um, and we had a good opportunity because, like I say. My goal is to, from my perspective, I think government needs to change behavior in mm-hmm. certain areas. And in order to have the legal foundation to affect that kind of change, it requires converting my status into being one of the people. Okay. And with that, that must be very strange to law enforcement. It, it is. It's, yeah. it's a little unusual, so I'm trying to gain an understanding of it and being respectful of what you're trying to accomplish and what your beliefs are right. while balancing my responsibilities, but also making sure that we learn appropriately how to handle situations like this and we run into situations where someone's as compliant and cooperative and willing to talk about right what you're all about it's an opportunity for us to learn so it pro- I, i'm sure these stops become very prolonged for you when you do have contact with the police but yeah. i'm trying to be as respectful and polite as i can i appreciate the, the believe me I knew, I knew what i was doing this is not something that i did oh really i'm sure it, so. I, I can't imagine you just you just go out and say well we'll see what happens today it's just, well first off if you just go into the dmv they're not going to issue these plates sure I mean, no i'm sure is, it's uh, just taking like you said several years worth of work and yeah. a lot of research and a right. lot of documentation so exactly uh, very so I, very unique part of the job is going to involve these types of contact right and and i look at it as an opportunity as well to show how our government 
grows over time, how our nation matures, and this may be a process of it. Okay. Okay, but you are willing to come in and talk and do all that type Absolutely. of stuff? Absolutely. I'd be honored to come in and talk. So, let me... I'll give you my card if you oh, want that, my you card. Have a card. Yeah. Yep. Okay, so that's the cell phone number in your email. Uh, yeah, okay. it's it actually rings to my cell phone. Oh, okay. If I'm out of the area, uh -huh. it'll go to voicemail and then send me an email. And then these are blogs that you post on, or yeah, I got some YouTube videos, um, and you'll notice every single one, everything that I do. I'm very pro law enforcement. Okay. I'm very anti those guys that say don't roll your windows down, stuff like that. I I'm. I say the exact opposite. Okay. Uh, I want to treat things like, what if my great grandfather were here and he was getting, and I was with him, he'd be upset if I if you didn't if I didn't sure. exactly. So that okay. that's the well. So far, based upon our interaction in the last handful of minutes, how do you think things are going from our interaction? Fantastic. Okay. Yeah. All right. Okay. Let me. So you, how about you, you? Can I ask you how I, you feel the same way? I mean, it, 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 it's it's obviously obviously a unique situation from my perspective, but I feel very comfortable with with our conversation, and I appreciate you taking the time to help educate us Great. and develop an understanding and it's refreshing to have some some traffic stops are, are confrontational anyway and I, right. I really said so I've been doing this a long time and and I don't feel they need to be so I try to approach everyone politely and respectfully and give people an explanation of what I'm doing but right. it's a mutual exchange of information and we when, when we happen upon a situation like this where documentation starts coming that is very very abnormal for us right I want to make sure I understand it so I can make the best informed decision I can but when I have an opportunity to learn from somebody and and I tell you what I'm really appreciative of you guys out there because there's a lot of really bad guys out there, and okay. and, uh, and so I oh, I appreciate the time to oh you know what do you mind I one of our uh, one of our, our detectives showed, has stopped by to see what's going on okay he's actually very very intelligent I think he would like an opportunity to talk to you do you sure. mind talking to him too no. but I'm gonna hold on to your card okay and could I get your card absolutely Detective Moore hey, hey. Sorry about that. I'm She's sorry. harmless. There you are, sir. Thank you very much. Okay, let me just talk to him for real briefly, and I'll have him chat with you. Okay. And, uh, look for an email from me, because I do Wonderful. appreciate your time, all right? Yeah, absolutely. Got a minute and a half left here. Hey, Corey. Good afternoon. Hey, I'm sorry. How do I say your last name again? Well, it's a family name, and you can it, you can just call me Corey. It's oh, pronounced Ibe. Ibe. Okay. Yeah. All right. Sorry about that. Um, no, no worries. Um, I'm, I'm a detective that generally deals with the, the, the license plates okay. and stuff, and yeah. I'm, I'm curious about your exempt plate. Okay. Um, can I ask you a few questions? Sure. About yeah. If, if it in, if we get into a territory where I have to be careful, I'll let you know. Oh, yeah. Okay. You, yeah. You're, I'm just talking to you. So beautiful. You, you know, you you talk to me, we'll just be two people talking to each other. All right. Um, what is? I see you have your registration here. What? Um, when did you get the plate? Uh, like, remember? Well, yeah. It's just it says right on there. I think it was the 16th of this month. Oh, it was this month you got it? Yeah. Oh, okay. All right. So you got it. You got it this month. Yes. And um, what office did you get it out of? Costa Mesa. Costa Mesa. Okay. Did you do it by mail or did you go in? Went there in. You went yeah, in. they don't do these things by mail. Okay. And then, um, so you did, you did it by mail, and then. No, <laughs> didn't do it by mail. <laughs> no, I did not do it by mail. I'm sorry. That's. It's a difficult it time, office, difficult thing to understand. And, and it's been a long day for me. I apologize. Fair enough. Fair enough. Fair enough. So you went in, uh, you went in there and did it, and then it's been a long day, and you just blew his mind. He'd never seen such a document before, right? And wow, that again, I, I'd listen to the full. Uh, I think it, what you had parsed out of the hour and a half stop was forty-five minutes of interchange between you and August. And uh, you know, it's funny how names mean something. I mean, you know, an August, you know, occasion. This was an August occasion, Corey. You had, yeah. a, you had a. Uh, Encounter by the side of the road that most of us uh, abhor and, and, and are fearful of. And, you know, the, the Crosby, Stills, Natch, and Young song, you know, comes to mind, you know, uh, seeing, you know, lights in your, in your rearview mirror. And, and uh, the guy was totally cool. It, he was. And, and I have to tell you, I, I, the audio, um, I, I can hear things in my voice, but I was very nervous. I, I, I had never been stopped before. I didn't know if I was going to be taken off to jail. And in this game, you have to be ready to be able to deal with that. And mentally, I'm ready uh, to spend some time in jail, that I would stay calm and, and be very professional throughout the entire uh, ordeal. But throughout that entire contact, uh, I was worried that the officer might feel it necessary that I was going to have to be taken in. And that's a nerve-wracking uh, time. So being able to stay calm, um, 
keep my hands on the steering wheel, I'll be polite. Uh, it, it has served me well to consciously make the effort to stay calm, breathe deep, talk slowly, and, and do the best I can to inspire any officer that I come in contact with to honor his oath. So there's so little things like, what's your last name? You know, I mean, you, you know, if you had answered, you know, it's I, well, then you've again, consented that you have a last name and, and subsequently, you know, they own the last name. It's right there on the birth certificate, the last name. And so now you've re re consented to be property. That's right. These are the little things. And it, it may, you know, people may go, you know, this is all just a bunch of nonsense. You know, how can you, I mean, I'm sorry, everybody. It is, it, these things matter. They matter significantly. And, uh, it's a Byzantine system that we've allowed to grow up around us. Uh, it, the, to, for some more context, uh, your plates, uh, the plates, I should say, that you obtained uh, to put on the back of this government-owned car because the government owns all the cars driving around in California. They do. Yep. They, own every they just rent them, them back to you. That's right. You just rent them back. You get to you go pay the registration to rent the use of it. Um, and that's, you know, just look up MCO. Um, you know, the, what's that stand for, Corey? The, uh, uh, manufacturer's Certificate of Origin. Sometimes it's also MSO, which means Manufacturer's Statement of Origin, which is the birth certificate to your car. Yep. If anybody goes out and buys a new car, as you're signing all those different documents, um, you'll see part of the process is you turn title of the vehicle over to the state. And uh, that, that comes from when you purchase the car brand new from the dealer. You're going to take the car's birth certificate and sign over all the interest in the car to the state and then begin to pay rent to the state for using the car as well as paying for the automobile itself. It's a hell of a racket. Yeah. And it started from a time when people really trusted government. It, when they, you know, inherently everybody knows government needs to have revenue in order to run. And uh, the thought of registering automobiles this way people didn't realize how dangerous it would become, how, how much power you turn over to the government when you allow them to do what they've done with automobile registration and driver's licenses and things. It started out very innocuously, very simple, and, and it took advantage of the people's goodwill towards their government um, in the, at the beginning of the 20th century when automobiles were first put on the scene. And clearly the government knew right away that, oh, this is going to be a a cash cow. This would be something they can make huge amounts of money on. And anytime they need more money, they just add another fee to your registration. You know, the uh, uh, one of the uh, early presidents, and I don't call him the first president, Corey, because there were, I think, seven or eight presidents prior to George Washington. We're just not taught about those presidents. That's right. Uh, George Washington was purportedly... Uh, Reportedly stated, he's been quoted as saying, it's a fairly famous statement, government is not reason, it is not eloquent, it is force. Like fire, it is a dangerous servant and a fearful master. And that is, you know, the example, the, the trajectory of the DMV and the, and the whole ownership of cars and, and vehicles is a classic example of that. Um, it's it, So, meanwhile, you, you, you've... You were able to, to you know, travel on your way. They left you unmolested, didn't issue a citation, correct? That, that's correct. Mm -hmm. um, I, I think there's a little bit more on the, uh, on the tape there. I did order the official recording. Um, you know, the, the, the detective, Detective Moore, in, in the brief moment when uh, Officer August was explaining to Detective Moore kind of the, the situation, and he said he was not inclined to give me a citation. Officer Moore told him, you have to give him a ticket. He doesn't have a license. And that is something that is interesting in the 1879 Constitution to show you how, how devious this is. In the, in the Constitution for the state of California, 1879, it says that an agency may not, uh, not enforce a law based on constitutional grounds unless the appellate court has said you can't issue, you can't, enforce a law on constitutional grounds. So the government has gone through, the, the powers that be have bound officers to where they, their job could be in jeopardy for not giving you a ticket or not enforcing the law. And I mean, how crazy is that to take the ability for an officer to decide whether or not something is constitutional at that moment, an take that away from uh, him. An oath he's sworn to uphold. Exactly. He's sworn to uphold the Constitution, yet the, he can be fired, have his, his career impacted severely for following the Constitution. And, and 
know, this might be a good time to bring that up. I have a feeling that that, that Officer August, for what he did at the side of the road there, I think he has been uh, affected negatively for this. Mm-hmm. With uh, with Irvine PD, it's very. I've not been able to get in touch with him. His contact information has been moved. It still shows that he's an officer there, um, uh, but I fear that he may have had to pay a price for uh, in his professional career for following the Constitution and having a stop that went about this way. He didn't identify a crime that was an arrestable offense that he would uh, be able to come up with a harm party uh, or fraud or anything like that. And he followed the law and let me go. Well, if you're inclined, if you're listening to this uh, pre-recorded show of Agenda 31 and you're inclined to uh, participate in in some level, you can call the non-emergency Irvine Police Department number, which is area code 949-724-7000, 949-724-7000, and ask to speak to Officer Matt August and see if you can get him on the line and thank him for how he treated Corey on the road. Uh, I think this was in May of last year. Uh, it, actually, it was Ju- July, I believe, okay. of last well, year, summer yeah. of, of 2013, and you know that he recognized Corey as a uh, one of the people of California 1849 and uh, treated him as such. Um, since this happened, uh, your those plates mysteriously disappeared from from that car, didn't it, Corey? Well, it's not mysterious. The uh, about two weeks later, there was a setup. I was traveling again to go play disc golf. And I was stopped by Officer Moore, not to be confused with Detective Moore, but Officer Moore. And he was, couldn't be more opposite than uh, Officer August in his uh, interest in looking at the totality of circumstances. He pulled me over, and the first question was, what's up with the plates? I gave him all of my information, the same information that I gave to Officer August, and he just ignored all of it, wrote a citation, which means I was placed under arrest and charged in the specific sequence of first, middle, last, which is, a, like I said earlier, a benefit I don't qualify for. I controlled the signature on the citation, and I, I don't know if we have enough time today, but maybe another show we can go into a little bit deeper on that. But he did issue a citation, and the, he did it in such a way that I faced potential jail time, up to a year in jail for driving without a license and a misdemeanor. The district attorney refused to prosecute that case. And uh, it then proceeded as an infraction where the officer came in and provided evidence that was uh, perjury in nature. He committed perjury, literally. Um, But the way the traffic courts are set up, it's impossible in the traffic court, at least for my ability, my limited legal ability, it was impossible to prove anything. And on top of that, the judge, or he's actually a commissioner during the traffic trial, uh, refused exculpatory evidence, evidence that would uh, tend to, to show my innocence. He wouldn't allow that on the record. So that is currently pending an appeal. And that went all the way back to, I, I'm sorry, it was the middle of June. It was August 1st that they actually confiscated the plates the day that I was doing an appearance in court. Uh, they came out to the house and confiscated the license plates. And to see how much this is kind of boiled over into a real problem for everybody in government, the DMV is now falsified records to try and support the confiscation of the plates. They're hiding the person who ordered the, the plates be taken back. They have falsified the dates on certain records that they created, which I can prove. And uh, now it's the laborious way of dealing with government and the Public Records Act and forcing all of this to be out in the open that uh, I intend to show there was a conspiracy to deny me my secured right to domicile within California. Um, The Irvine uh, Police Department sent a letter that said that they consider this matter concluded and I interpreted that as, you know, leave us alone. But that's not what's going to happen. Any time an officer lies, the officer Moore who issued the citation two weeks after this stop that we just heard, he falsified public records when I ordered the dash cam video. Uh, he sent video of uh, a cop car parked in a shopping center parking lot for 40 minutes. It has nothing to do with the stop. He lied about an amendment to the citation because the court, again, I, I carefully controlled my signature on the citation, and the court rejected the citation. So he filed an amendment, which was kind of a, a, a loophole that allows an officer to force a traffic trial without a citation. Without by consent. S- that, and without consent and, and without any resemblance of truth 
it's able to force a traffic trial where there is no citation. And, and so, this is because he's dealing with what he considers to be the first, middle, and last name construction of the property that the, his employer owns. That's right. And any anything to the contrary of that, um, he just is not going to recognize. And a, a big part of it, too, is now I've uncovered through this that the chief of police was never appointed by the city council. It was a corrupt appointment through the city manager, which the law, in, in the form of government that Irvine is, the law is very clear that they want to separate the city manager from the chief of police, that those two offices must be completely separate. And if you allow them, if you allow the city manager to control the chief of police, now the city council has no real power at all. The The city manager is really the dictator over the city. Mm -hmm. And in Irvine, there is incredible amounts of corruption. And just my existence of traveling in a car with exempt plates, using my given and surname, and 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 being domiciled in California 1849 exposes the corrupt nature of the people that are high up in government in Irvine and the more than $100 million that they've stolen from the Great Park. You know, uh, let's, let's rewind a second on, on the Officer Moore. Uh, we call it the Sunflower Seed Incident because that was his, his supposed premise of, of a, a kid, kidnapping you via a citation. That's right. And that was you were spitting sunflower seeds out the window or the husks of seeds, and he tried to do a, a littering thing. But what I'm getting at is – Let's go back to what you talked about at the very beginning of the show, Corey, and this concept of evaluating a hypothetical. Um, how, can, what, what did you, how did you put that again? The well, in order to get, you know, freedom is a moral argument. And if you want to discuss the issue of freedom as a moral argument, it's important to take the hypothetical seriously. There you go. Take the hypothetical seriously. And so let's take the hypothetical that an individual is uh, brought into this world, never issued a birth certificate, never issued a social security number, never goes to a public school, never consents along the way to any of the GovCo um, uh, uh, adhesion contracts that are out there, and actually gets inside an a, a automobile all right, and traverses down the road. And is pulled over by office and spits sunflower seeds out the window, the husks of seeds out the window, and is pulled over by Officer Moore. All right, you know, under threat of you know duress, essentially, you know, flashing lights and guns. I mean, if you don't pull over, he'll call in back up, and there'll be a you know a car chase, and they'll stop you and you know get their guns out. Right? I mean, right. you got you got to pull over. This is force. This is yes. coercion. All right. Yeah. So then he rolls up on on the this hypothetical in individual, and there's no record of this individual. Right. That, that's what we're talking about. This is the hypothetical. This is the status that Corey has achieved uh, through lots of you know, effort, and, and it's not a fun road to hoe. <laughs> yeah, it, it certainly has not been profitable. I think it's vitally important, but uh, it's something that I, I believe in order to, to prevent the Agenda 21 uh, onslaught on our nation, the the rise of tyranny and just the absolute domination from federal government that this is the path that has to be taken and that is to reinstitute the original form of government that the founding fathers saw fit to put uh, in place where the federal government is separated from the people and cannot directly legislate upon the people. I don't think the general populace, I mean, obviously the general populace, but I mean, even those who are c trying to pay close attention and, and rail against the, the, behave, the poor, bad behavior of, of government understand just how deep the federal government's claws have gotten into your local community. You have a letter from the chief of police of L.A. Ex essentially verifying that the, the so-called so sworn officers of the L.A. police department are not state officers of California. They are, in fact, federal municipal officers. That's correct. Yeah, the, the law is clear that um, peace officers must file their oath at the county recorder's office. And an LAPD officer, uh, some of the LAPD officers had their oath at the county recorder and some didn't. And one officer that I had uh, a contact with, it was a consensual contact, but he did conduct himself in a manner as being an officer of the state or a peace officer of California 1849. Mm -hmm. And his oath was not at the county recorder's office. Um, so I had engaged with LAPD on this issue as well as the county recorder, and that changed the behavior of both agencies. Uh, the county recorder will no longer record documents from an L.A. police officer. It's a non-recordable document, and LAPD sent a letter identifying that 
LAPD officers are not officers of the state. They are security guards for the federal corporation. That's right. That's exactly and, what it is. And, and I want this to, to be, I think this is really important. Chief Charlie Beck, I believe, in, in my contact with them, he wants to get it right. The federal corporation is allowed to have their security officers. They're allowed to have their own citizens. They're allowed to have all of this. They're just not allowed to force you into it against your will. And the presumption remains that everybody walking around is federal property, and subsequently the federal security forces are going to treat you as such.